Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson. Um, this week it's going to be a one-off um, and we're just going to do a quick sketch of this glass. So I had a student who asked me um, sort of about drawing glass. <clears throat> Obviously different types of glass vary so you can draw uh, windows or more complex versions of glass. You get kind of glass orbs, uh, windshields and those things, sorts of things on cars, uh, vases if you're doing still life. Um, so I've opted for a, just a simple um, sort of tall drinking glass um, just to kind of look generally how you can approach the fact that it's a combination of or has a combination of reflections um, so it's tr both transparent and reflective so you get light that refracts through it and you can kind of see things through it but you also get reflections um, in the denser portions of the glass um, so you get kind of s sort of darker stripes within the form and then the reflection, the reflective nature of it means that you get kind of strong highlights at the same time. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to be doing it reasonably quickly. It's going to be like another, another kind of 20, 30 minute sketch, <coughs> just looking at how you can build it up. The approach is similar to um, pretty much all the, a lot of the other lessons. So it's, it's based on shapes. So we're looking for specific shapes within the glass um, to kind of take note of um, and focus on. Um, and we're gonna, it's gonna be a simplified version of all the reflections that we see, um, which I recommend doing. So don't kind of go in and try to find every tiny little reflection that there is <clears throat> in the glass. Look for kind of what generally the reflections seem to be doing. That's a better way to analyze how the glass is working. Um, so we can get started. I'm gonna set my glass up slightly off camera because um, it works slightly better. Um, in terms of the light and doesn't get in the way or roll around while I'm drawing. Um, so I'm going to be drawing it on its side. Try to set the camera in a way that so you can see the position the glass is in over there. So maybe I'm just going to swivel my camera around a bit to try to get, get it to be a bit more alongside. Should be all right. <clears throat> so, just swiveling my glass around a bit, trying to get a nice angle on it. So, I'm going to begin just by sketching the cylindrical form. A bit of a mark left on my paper there. So, um, yeah, I've got a slight tapering of the glass. So, if I do the sides of it. First, the glass kind of naturally tapers. It's just getting narrower as it goes back, basically. So I'm being quite light with my lines, which is always a good way to start. And I'm now going to look for kind of the, the center line, so the two points where the ellipses or the ellipses um, kind of crosses. So, looking at it, it kind of it works something like something like this. So I'm just freehand sketching it in. You could do it with a proper um, perspective system, but because we're looking more at the uh, kind of specular effects of the effects of the glass, I won't go into too much detail about how you go about getting this. We're we'll doing that in future lessons. So I'm just kind of guessing this lips by eye, um, hence my slightly scratchy lines. Too bad. <clears throat> so 
the base of the glass is going to roughly mimic the other ellipse, but it's going to be a little bit smaller, it's a little bit further away, and also the glass tapers as I say. So that will bring our connecting lines down. <coughs> Slightly change in the angle of the ellipse. So you can see as I tilt that up, it, it kind of makes a bit more sense in the context of these um, side sections. I've gone slightly too dark. I generally would prefer to, things to be a little bit lighter. So what I'm going to do is just lightly erase back over what I've done. But I still have that initial uh, light sketch underneath. So <clears throat> the first thing you'll notice with a glass like this, you'll get certain points where the glass becomes denser, or at least as you look through it, it becomes denser. So this, uh, pretty much all tumblers like this or kind of glasses like this will have a, a welling up of glass at the base. So they're, they're stronger at the base. And that means the glass is thicker at the base. So rather than being kind of transparent, not transparent but like an empty vessel essentially um, they've actually got a body to them so that's gonna be the starting point for my first set of reflections so as I look at it I can see this shape here which kind of crinkles backwards and forwards. It's to do with the way the glass, the density in the glass works. Then got another slightly lighter um, kind of shadow, well not a shadow really, but accumulation of value here. And they're separated by a kind of fine gap so what you find with glass, you'll get lots of, you get a little bit with chrome as well. <clears throat> Sections like this where you get little gaps um, where an internal reflection is occurring. Um, and you don't have to worry too much about the physics, I suppose, of why those reflections are there, certainly when you first start. What we're doing with this kind of exercise, just observing um, so it's quite an interesting subject to work from, if nothing else. Um, I'm just going to start. So as you add things, you can sort of start shading them in. So I'm going to shade in that. It's one of the darker points in the glass. So I'm going to shade that as an early note. Then this shape was slightly lighter. So I won't shade that too heavily. This one will probably get a bit darker um, as it progresses. Something like that. <coughs> so the there are kind of along this rim, there are sections that get a little bit darker. Um, there are right at the base as well. So just noted those. Then got a general sort of gradient running from the top of the glass up there down to this darker shape so we can sketch that in. So you're kind of looking for gradients and, and sort of dark patches to work with. And from that, you'll start to build up. Um, a sense of the glass and the reflections occurring within the glass. I 
can now start working. In this internal shape. So this is a, a shape at the back edge of that ellipse, which we see through the foreground glass. So I'm looking for bits of that shape that carry on and kind of the, the way that they carry on. Got a few bright white highlights, so they're going to remain. I'm going to try to keep them completely white as I'm shading in this section. So we want to make that highlight stand out, <clears throat> which means making sure the rest of the glass is all darker. So we're looking at kind of modulating our values as we always do to try to give the right effect. So that might mean I need to make this shape darker again. I've got quite a lot of room to move into darker values. And we're going to, at some point, we're going to be going back and erasing back into some of these highlights as well to make them stand out. They won't stand out initially um, just because you don't have that much of the, the glass drawn in. As more of it gets drawn in, um, they'll become more apparent. So I'm now going to move right up here um, because there's <coughs> a dark shape that travels all the way from the top here. And just about meets this bottom section but then kind of curves away. And it's darker at the top, pretty dark once it gets up here. And then gets progressively lighter as it travels down towards the base of the glass. So yeah, we've got that shape blocked in now. As I say, it's darker up here at the top. Then travels down. And there is then a little a bit of a jump a little bit of a gap. And a kind of thickening darker shape here. And that starts to show off the... Seems slightly overexposed my picture, I'm just going to... <coughs> um, yeah, so we can carry on this 
the shape here. And it kind of runs down that whole curve that we're looking at. Travels down the other side, it gets very thin and then it gets thicker again near the bottom. And again, that's to do with the kind of a, the way that the glass masses. So kind of looking for thickening and thinning sections here around the rim. And once we've done that, that kind of rounds out all the major portions of the glass. What we're going to start to look at now are reflections that occur because of, or not reflections, um, I'm going to look at shadows that occur due to light traveling through the glass. So that's kind of sort of working on the background, but doing that is, is an important aspect of um, kind of creating a sense of place for the glass or so sort of increasing the realism. So we're going to look at the shadow cast by the glass. <clears throat> and you'll start to see kind of relationships between sections where the glass is thicker, so the glass is thicker here, which means it's casting a thicker shadow onto the onto the ground. Generally it's harder for light to travel through the rim, so that's darker than the interior portion of the shadow. So you can see that this shadow adds quite a lot to the 
general sense of glass so it makes it clear that it's transparent that it's casting this sort of transparent shadow um, the shadow makes sense in the context of the the forms in the glass So at this stage, if everything's working reasonably well, you can start to reinforce some of your values, um, some of the darker sections, especially where they kind of butt up to lighter portions like here, just because it makes that highlight stand out a little bit more. So getting pretty close to a point where you could be pretty happy and call it a day. Um, you can of course also just keep working on something like this, looking for little smaller subsets of reflections. Um, kind of working backwards and forwards so you can go in and um, look for specific highlights. Um, the other thing you can do that works really well for glass drawings is if you want to work with um, on a toned paper um, and draw in pencil or charcoal um, the darker sections in pencil or charcoal but then for your highlights use white um, that works really well <coughs> so you can kind of see the highlights they only really become more apparent as I start to sort of tone everything else in. Um, so if I was to tone glass a little bit more there, then maybe make it darker on this side um, this highlight then starts to stand out with a bit more clarity um, If I wanted to amplify that even further, you could maybe start to shade in the background as well. Although doing that would then require you to, we can do this in a second, but it would require you to start going back over everything you've already done and darkening that further as well. Um, but it does then give you a, a greater kind of 
potential range to build your highlights in your glass. So just loosely sketch this in. So that would mean you'd then have to go a bit darker again with all of these internal values. You just kind of keep adding to them just so that you can see that you're looking through glass so it's a little bit darker than the than the background it's resting on and then likewise this bit. We'll get darker. This internal shadow would be yet darker again. gives us a bit more range for these highlights on the rim of the glass. Can really kind of make them look like they're glowing if you blow them out a little bit. Uh, can do the same on this, this little one down here. And these ones as well. You kind of soften the edge of the highlight, it creates a sense that it's kind of so bright, it's kind of glowing a bit. Kind of, you sort of see it with uh, photography. You can sort of mess around with those effects a bit. So I can go in and find some of these, these highlights where they're occurring. I think that's about it for all the major ones. Maybe have a little bit of a kind of glow out just along there. You can kind of mess around and see certain things will like amplify certain effects as well. So you can erase backwards and forwards, add and remove tone, see how it affects the drawing, especially when you're first um, kind of practicing these. Yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it for our glass drawing. Um, just tilt the camera over it a bit more. Oh, lost my, lost my fluffy thing. Um, but yeah, hold the camera there. Go to crisp. Yeah, you should get the idea. So, as I say, pretty simple um, exercise. In terms of the shape, um, a lot more complex in terms of. Um, your ability to kind of see um, how all the smaller intersecting shapes work um, and then kind of find highlights and that sort of thing. Um, just realize it's slightly wonky my ellipse, probably as a result of drawing at an angle. Those sorts of things you can kind of mess around with um, and get accurate. But yeah, hopefully that was interesting. Um, as always, can you guys um, let me know if you've got any questions um, you can post down below in the, the video and if you subscribe you'll get uh, updates for future videos um, if you go to OCAD you can the OCAD course which should be a link below um, you'll be able, be able to see if you're interested in signing up and you'll be able to get kind of one-on-one -on -one tuition um, through the course that way um, when you're working on these sorts of projects but yeah hopefully it's interesting and I'll see you guys soon